Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to call the 2024 annual meeting of the membership to order. Please join me in watching the 2023 SFPGA year in review video. Welcome to the new South Florida PGA headquarters. This is Tyler Collett. Tyler was a South Florida PGA Player of the Year. When we came here for the groundbreaking, this was just a big hump of dirt. And then now, look at God's vision. 62 is the fourth record here in Air Marlene. It's awesome to tell you the truth, seeing the smiles of these veterans, um, the people that you get to play with and help are so nice and so worthy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. great video. You can tell so many great things are happening here at the section. It has been a pleasure to serve as your section president over the last 12 months, and I look forward to year two of my term. As an officer, and certainly as a president, I have had the opportunity to spend more time learning and supporting section activity while also being an active participant in national governance meetings. I am reminded constantly as we travel to national meetings how fortunate we are to have the section we have, and so much of the success is due to all the previous le leaders of this great section. 
As noted, we are live here in the new section headquarters at the park in West Palm Beach. A portion of this meeting has been pre-recorded and a portion will be presented live. As we get started, I would like to remind everyone about the chat feature you will see at the bottom corner of your screen. We encourage you to send questions and comments through this feature. During the meeting, we will address those during the open forum. I would like to thank all our past presidents for their service in getting this section to where it is today. Thank you all. I would like to introduce the president of the South Florida PGA Foundation, none other than Tom Wildenhouse. Please join me in watching this video report from Tom. Good morning, fellow PGA members and associates. Thank you so much for some time this morning to talk about the South Florida PGA Foundation, our foundation. Um, it's really impressive what's happening with our PGA HOPE program. We've completed nine HOPE programs already this year, and we've had two HOPE programs that were for women only. That's spectacular for this section, and we're looking forward to doing some more HOPE programs. We've served over 1,400 veterans now since 2015, and we still have 15 programs to go yet in 2024. So if you'd like to get involved, keep your eye out for another training session that will take place in July and then hopefully some of you will be able to host a program at your facility. Uh, we are truly thankful for the women and men that are running these veteran programs. Um, it's, really, it's really special. Uh, we're not only changing lives, but we know that we're saving lives through our PJ Hope program. So thank you very much for your dedication to our veterans. The Smiling for Life program, as you know, is back. It's up and it's operational. We are back at four of the six medical facilities that we've been operating in. And in the coming year, we are looking to re-engage with the Galisano Sense Children's your Hospital is in Naples and Fort Myers and Valerie's House. It doesn't in last for 80 well. days so on the shelf. For other volunteer opportunities when it comes time to Smiling for Life. Our thanks again go out to the PGA members that are going into these medical facilities and teaching these kids golf for one hour a week. It's really something special. And if you've never been, my PG, my association is having its annual meeting. So our scholarship program this year was fantastic. Other education points very, very signed into worthy candidates. But we're very excited for Don Kennedy out of Cape Coral. Is that why you tried tried to qualify the other day? Florida PGA Foundation. Don will will attend the University of Florida this coming fall. We wish him the very best, and we look forward to following him through his journey at the University of Florida. Habitat for Humanity. It'll be a little different this year. We're going to start it in the Keys on June 5th, but it's a manufactured home, so it doesn't require as many volunteer days on our behalf as PJ members. We will have a key passing celebration um, in August, which uh, we, will, we will notify everybody about that in case you want to take a trip to the Keys. Um, however, uh, what we're going to try to do different this year with the Habitat program is find volunteer days in your community, in your neighborhood, where you might be able to go and work on a home. It won't be a PGA home, but it, we will be giving back to our community, which was the whole thing and why we started working with Habitat chapters anyway. The 10 All In STEM program, which is awesome if you want to go out to Belle Glade and help out in Belle Glade. Um, it's going to run uh, June 10th through the 14th. We'll be at the middle school this year trying to identify some kids and try to get them introduced to golf at a little younger age than we have the last few years. Um, we will be running the golf portion of the STEM stuff between 9 and 12. If you want to help with this, please call the section office and um, get yourself down on the list. So fundraising has been really, really good. I can't thank the staff enough for all the effort, uh, especially Jeff Lofstead and Meredith Schuler. Thank you so much for your tremendous efforts in helping us reach our goals when it comes time to fundraising. We recently ran the, the East Coast Yellow Birdie Bash. Uh, where, where our portion, our net portion is $154,515 towards our capital campaign, which will help to um, set up our foundation for the future. we got a little ways to go to get to the $10 million that Jeff wants to get to, but we're making great progress. The West Coast Yellow Birdie Bash will take place in October. There's plenty of time and there's plenty of room left for you to grab a partner and um, prepare to play in the West Coast Yellow Birdie Bash. Sincere thanks to all the PGA members that have run a fundraising program at their facility. Um, for the likes of Paul Clivio at St. Andrews Country Club, Don, Donald Shea at Foxfire Country Club, Tom Patrick recently did his marathon golf again this summer at Twin Eagles Country Club. 
Tom Metzger at the Vineyards. Again, longtime supporter. Metzi, thank you so much. And Nolan Ream at Old Florida Golf Club ran their birdie a as well. We can't thank you all enough. Uh, your donations and, and your running those private fundraising efforts is the motivation that the foundation board needs to keep going. And it gives us uh, the, the confidence that our programs are going are gonna, to are gonna last into the future, and we can't thank you enough. If you have any questions about the foundation, please give me a call at Old Florida. I'd be happy to answer your questions, or you can call the section office, um, and, and anyone in the office will be able to give you a hand with that. Um, and before my time is up, we definitely want to welcome Daryl Bach, the PGA, to the South Florida PGA. Um, Daryl has a tremendous amount of expertise in the area of foundation. And he'll take over as the foundation, uh, the director of the foundation, excuse me. And uh, we look forward to getting to know and work with Daryl. Again, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoy the rest of the meeting. Take care. Thanks, Tom. Great video. Foundation continues to do some great, amazing work. And thank you to the Foundation Board for all their time and energy changing lives through the game of golf. Please, at this time, make sure if you're joining in, you do hit the mute button. We're getting a little interference with some people who have not muted. So if you could do that, we would appreciate it. Next, I'd like to call the Secretary of the PGA, South Florida PGA, Jeff Weber, to the podium to give his report. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you to you all for signing in today. Good afternoon. As a secretary of the South Florida PGA, most of my responsibility centers around you, the member, and membership-related issues. We currently have the following breakdown for the section. 1,696 members, 322 associates, 2,018 is a total which ranks us number two in the country. 380 life members, which puts us number one in the country, as well as 155 female members, which again is number one in the country. You're starting to see a trend. First, I'd like to review all new PGA members. Their names are now displayed on the screen. Congratulations to all those new members in our section. Now I'd like to pay respect to deceased members from this past year. Angelo Campy, February 8th. Brad Alexander, February 2nd. Butch Stewart, January 10th. Chad Mays, May 16th. Don Powell, August 25th. Don Vandermillen, June 24th. Gary Keating, April 15th. John Henry, March 17th. Nevin Sutcliffe, April 25th. Tom Holt, April 11th. Tomas Francesca, November 9th. Sandy Robertson, July 7th. Jack Carney, May 23rd. Please join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. As awards chairperson, I'd like to review and recognize our section award winners from this past year, 2023. Pam Elders, Patriot Award. John Davis, Salesman of the Year. Gary Keating, Merchandiser of the Year, Public. Scott Lean, Merchandiser of the Year, Resort. Ken Wayand, Merchandiser of the Year, Private. Ryan Fountain, Assistant of the Year. Matt Oakley, Deacon Palmer Award. Jason Miller, Youth Player Development Award. Mike Richards, Player Development Award. Sarah Dixon, Bill Strasbaugh Award. Steve Hudson, PGA Professional Development. Renee O'Higgins, Teacher of the Year. And Lee Strover, Golf Professional of the Year. Congratulations.
This concludes my report as secretary. I just want to say thank you to Eric and Paul. I appreciate your time. Thanks, Jeff, for your report. I'd like now like to call Vice President Eric Veyu to the podium to give his report. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Jeff. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As vice president of the section, my primary responsibility is centered on the financials of the section. Fortunately, we are in a very solid position financially. I will share a few highlights regarding our finances, and I'll remind all of you that our financial reports are part of the annual meeting booklet that was distributed by the section. For the fiscal year of 2023, the section ended the year with a net operating income of $267,000 which was $163,000 better than budget. Total revenue for the section was $3.6 million, which is a new all-time high in revenue generated. The foundation ended the year with $490,000 in net operating income. All net income from the foundation is being placed into an investment account with the goal of creating an endowment for the foundation. The foundation also hit an all-time high in revenue with $1.5 million. Our consolidated financial position, which is the section and foundation combined, showed a total assets of $7.8 million. The consolidated net worth of the section is just under $6 million. As a snapshot of our growth over time, the consolidated net worth of the section 15 years ago was just over a million dollars. Our investments, which are actively managed by our advisor, Rob Torrington from Raymond James and Associates performed well also. The section investments provided a net increase in assets of $240,000 and foundation investments provided a net increase in assets of 164,000. As for this fiscal year, 2024, the board has approved the consolidated budget of just under $6 million. Though we are already performing well ahead of budget, which will likely result in the largest operating budget we have ever had. Some highlights of this year include, through April, total revenue is already up $573,000, just over 2.3 million. Junior golf revenue is up over $60,000 compared to the same period last year. Golf pass revenue is up $60,000 compared to the same period last year. And through April, we're showing a, real, uh, a significant positive variance to our budget. So as you can see, we're doing well financially. We do work diligently to ensure our financial success and sustainability for the future. Thank you so much. Have a great day and hope you all had a great season. Thank you, Eric. And yes, we are in great financial position, thanks to the great work of this section office, and we can't thank you enough. This was just a reminder, today is the last day to nominate one of your peers for a section award. I will now give my report. As president of the section, it's my responsibility to ensure we follow proper policies and procedures that have been outlined by all of our previous leaders. A few of the highlights from section activities I would like to address. I am very proud of our new section office and how it has come together here at the park. The park continues to be a great supporter of the section and we thank them for all they have done and continue to do for the section. I especially want to thank PGA General Manager Brian Conley for his continuous support of the section and foundation programming. Last fall, we announced Jim Courtsborn as the newest member of the South Florida PGA Hall of Fame. Jim is a past president of the section and spent many years serving and giving back to his peers. Jim accepted a new role, role at a facility in Texas. For the second time in five years, South Florida section member has been recognized as a national merchandiser of the year in the private club category. Morgan Jewell, director of golf at Florida National, Floridian National won the award and will be recognized at the PGA annual meeting in November. Can't wait to celebrate that with you, my friend. 
Tom reported on a very successful birdie bash. I have had the opportunity to participate in all three of them. And in the total, our section has raised more than $1.2 million in three years. Incredible. Individually, the two sum of Eric Veyu and Ryan Fountain have raised a combined over $230,000 themselves. In February, our officers attended the PGA Super Regional meetings in Houston to listen and interview candidates who are running for secretary of the PGA of America. After spending two days listening to the candidates, we unanimously decided to support Eric Eshelman, who is the PGA Director of Golf at Birmingham Country Club in Alabama. We were the first section to write a letter of support for Eric and is already up to 19 sections who have announced their support and candidacy. Eric has a large lead in the election and it appears likely he will be elected secretary at the annual meeting in November. I would like to thank following, follow, the following outgoing board members since I have started my term as president. Southwest chapter at large board member, David Kent. Southern chapter at large, Bill Friesing. Southeast chapter president, Ben Bauer. Senior committee chairperson, Chris Kaufman. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for all the time and the efforts you did to help make this section better. I would like to welcome and recognize our most recent incoming board members. Southwest chapter at large board member, Sarah Dixon. Southern chapter at large, Joe Compatello. Southeast chapter president, Steve Hudson, and senior committee chairperson, Scott Newhouse. I've already had the opportunity to work with these people in the boardroom, and they're going to make a positive effect to make the section better. Thank you to this staff at the section office. As I said, nothing could be possible without the hard work they put in day after day for all the tournaments, for everything that goes on in this section to make our finances good, to run our tournaments well, and to do our programming. You don't know how much there really is involved until you see what goes on. And this team does it better than anyone in the country. As I sit here through my first year, I did this because I wanted to make the section a better place. And it is, it's the best section in the country. I can honestly say that. When I go to meetings nationally, I'm so proud to sit there and be the president of the section and show everyone else what we've accomplished. And in my second term, we're going to continue that and make sure that we stand atop all the sections in the country. I would like to next call Jeff Lofsted for the report of executive director. Thank you, Paul. It's uh, great to be here. It, it's really, I guess it's hard to believe that this is the fifth time that we've done uh, an annual meeting in, in a virtual format. When we when we first did this in 2020, we had uh, no choice but to uh, do the meeting the way the way we're doing it now. And now to look at the screen and see there's uh, 300 PGA professionals participating in the meeting. It's it's more than we normally uh, would have in a uh, in person meeting. So it, it's great to uh, have all of you take part in the meeting today. You know your busy season uh, it is coming to a close, and hopefully you have the opportunity to uh, spend some time away from away from your job and playing the game of golf. I think all PGA professionals have one thing in common, and that is uh, they they got into this profession because they love to play the game of golf. And and hopefully you'll have that opportunity to uh, to play the game of golf uh, over the summer months. Our, for us, uh, we we don't necessarily have a, a busy season year round. Uh, we stay very busy with activities, whether it be foundation programs, junior golf, section events, tour qualifiers in the winter, and I'll highlight some of those uh, statistics shortly. But, you know, in general, we we find ourselves in a state of the game right now that uh, that's heightened. There was 531 million rounds played last year, uh, the most rounds of golf that's ever been played. And if you really look, if you look back over five years, it's 100 million more rounds uh, that than was played just this five years ago. And and while the recreation game continues to uh, operate at, at an all time high, we have great turmoil in the professional game. It was uh, one year ago today that the PGA Tour announced uh, their plans to set up a framework agreement with 
uh, with PIF to create a new commercial entity to house all the commercial properties of the PGA Tour. Much progress, I'm sure, has been made behind closed doors, though we're not a, aware of that progress. But you know, the perspective that I have when I when I think about this is that the recreational game has never been higher. Arguably, the professional game has never been in more turmoil. And and so for for years, the thought was that uh, people came to the game of golf because they watched it on TV and then they participate in the game of golf. And and this makes you wonder whether or not people participate and enjoy the game of golf and then gravitate toward watching it on TV. And, and certainly, certainly the off course golf facilities have helped with that. But I, I think what it does is it calls uh, great attention to the work that PGA professionals are doing every day on the local level and and getting getting people interested in the game of golf. You know, as I talked about, you know, section uh, activity and what we have going on in this section, this year we will conduct uh, 450 uh, event days. This requires us to use approximately 200 facilities, including chapters. There are over 500 event days and 250 sites needed. Our golf pass sales are, are already up over 11,600 and on pace to sell uh, over 14,000 this year. In fact, it's on pace to uh, to set what would be a new year over year record. We've set a year over year record in the golf pass program uh, every year since 2008, with the exception of 2020 during COVID. Our junior tour this year and, and all the events that we'll conduct will play uh, over 6,500 rounds uh, in our junior golf program. I think we know that uh, this this only happens if if we uh, if we don't get complacent and we continue to uh, to work hard to elevate the, the programs that we have. You know, from a from a growth standpoint, and in particular in uh, in the state of Florida, by 2030, there's projected to be. 26 million people in the state of Florida. The state of Florida right now is uh, number one in net migration in the country with over a quarter million people moving to our state uh, every year. Every year, we're up a few million people just then a few years ago. That That's going to require about a hundred, about a million net new jobs in order to uh, accommodate the population growth. Certainly, a lot of that is, is going to happen in the golf industry. We've had several courses open over the last 12 months, we currently have eight golf courses that are in some stage of uh, planning to permitting to actual construction and, and opening soon uh, here. And, you know, as a state, I, I think we're well positioned to, uh, in particularly South Florida, we're well positioned to uh, to sustain this growth with so many of the boomers starting to be starting to become close to retirement and, and really, uh, in many cases, uh, those are the first ones to participate in 401k programs that uh, that were set up. So they're they're moving to Florida and in particular South Florida uh, with a great deal of wealth and a desire to be involved in the game. You know, our tournament season has started out great. We've had some great venues, some great championships uh, already. Participation is an all, is at an all time high. Uh, we're sold out for the South Florida Open that's upcoming here in Naples, Fort Myers area. We're almost sold out for the Pro Pro. It'll probably sell out any day now. We're tracking towards a sellout of the uh, the Pro Scratch Championship, and throughout the course of the year, we have uh, great venues lined up, highlighted by uh, the Section Championship. It's going to play be played at Imperial Golf Club in September this year. We will have the highest amount of spots of any of the sections that will qualify uh, for the PGA Professional National Championship. With our exempt players, we'll be sending 17 players to the National Championship next spring, and uh, our purse is projected to be at an all-time high due to the sponsor support that we've received. You know, nationally, uh, we've had an incredible showing already with uh, Tyler Collett, Evan Bowser, and Jeremy Wells playing in the PGA Championship. Uh, Jeremy Wells being the first South Florida PGA member to make the cut in the PGA Championship, the first one since 1983, only the second one in history in our section uh, to make the cut. And, and we put together a, a short little video highlighting uh, their special week at Mahala. Well, PGA professional out of Naples, Florida, Cypress Lake Golf Club. Oh! Really playing well. Look out! Oh. Currently two. That'll get into minus three. Well, what a thrill this must be! Not only to qualify, but to get here and play well. Eighteen, I beg your pardon. Four seventeen. Hey, we're just in. 
That works. So. Club professional. Who's playing really well. It is a nice looking swing. And a great shot. Wow. Finding the green has been an absolute challenge. Leave it. Let's see if this could come back nicely here. Hold on now. As good as we've seen, that's Tyler Collett. Lob wedge. Very nicely done. Sit right there. This is another club professional. Evan Bowser on the 14th, and we were describing just how difficult this hole is. Nothing to it. How about it? Evan Bowser with back-to-back -back birdies. Club professionals at 17. Yeah, Evan Bowser, we've seen him make some from off the green. Now a long putt. Good timing, Evan. Proud for them, and here's Jeremy Wells. Right, they might compete in section events, state events, but... Let's compete in the PGA Championship right. to get to three under par. Get there. Left. Sam, so there he goes. Step in. What do we got? Give me a teach. Okay. So it'll be par for Wells. Well and done. Good golfing. Heck yeah. 36 more holes to play. You know, in addition to uh, the guys that played in the in the PGA Championship, uh, we also had David Ladd and Alan Morin that qualified for and participated in the Senior PGA Championship. And upcoming here soon, we have uh, Mark Brown that will be participating in the U.S. Senior Open. And, you know, in addition to that, uh, another historic moment for the section is we've had uh, three of our section members qualify for the PGA Cup team, uh, which we played in uh, September in Oregon. Uh, joining uh, Tyler and Jeremy will be Matt Cahill, and the three of them uh, will play on the PGA Cup team. First time in the history of the section we've had uh, three members qualify in the same year to play on the PGA Cup team. The Golf Pass program, as I mentioned earlier, continues to be uh, a strong revenue driver for the section, and it really allows us to do so many of the other programs that, that we do. But, but in addition to uh, what it does for us, it's also providing significant revenue for golf facilities throughout the section in the slower summer months, some of which are reporting six figures in revenue. And it, it allows them to keep their staff employed and having them to earn wages during the summer months. But also what we found is our Golf Pass members are uh, potential members of, of these facilities with 43% uh, of our members, Golf Pass members are members already at private facilities. Over 66% of our Golf Pass members earn over $100,000 in income each year. And, and so this program uh, continues to be a great program for not only a section office, but uh, for all the facilities to participate. If you don't participate and you'd like to lear learn more, please please reach out to us in the office uh, to learn more about the Golf Pass program. You know, the, the, the park, we're, we're a year and a half into uh, our new headquarters building here at the park and the park celebrated its one year anniversary on, uh, on April 17th. And uh, the relationship that we have here really could not be any better. The park has been the one of the host facilities for the pro assistant. Each of the last two years, they've hosted junior activity, drive, chip, and putt, PGA Hope programs, uh, and so much more. We, we couldn't be more happy of the relationship that we have here at the park, and especially when you consider that uh, this is a very long-term relationship. This is a 50-year lease that we have uh, with the trust to be a part of the property here with a renewable of 20 years uh, on top of that. So we certainly look forward to uh, the future of, of what the park can do. Just this summer, the park has offered a $30 rate for all kids of our junior tour to play golf here, which is an amazing benefit for junior tour members. They're active in the Golf Pass program and, and provide a great value to our Golf Pass members. So we're, we're thrilled to have the opportunity to, uh, to be here at the park. Now, moving, moving on to partners, partnership is uh, critical in, in everything that we do. We we could not conduct the programs that we conduct without the the partners that we have. And, and partnership, certainly from a company level, is always a challenging discussion. 
but for all those that you see on your screen here, it's not challenging. It, they've decided it is in their best business interest to support South Florida PGA professionals. And what, what we would ask of all of you is that when it comes time for your buying decisions, that you could give these partners an opportunity, an opportunity to, uh, to earn your business. Uh, they participate and elevate our programs on a yearly basis, and any opportunities you can provide to them uh, will certainly be uh, greatly appreciated. I, I also want to thank uh, the board, the board of directors, not only for the section, but the foundation. It, I, I don't know that there's ever been a more challenging time to volunteer. All of you are so busy in your personal lives, in the jobs that you all hold, but this group that you see on your screen always finds a time to to serve their peers and to give back to the section and to elevate the section and the foundation to new levels. And there's no question it's it's this group and all the groups that have raised their hand and done that before them that has gotten us to the point we are today. And, and for the officers who uh, are engaged on um, maybe not a daily basis, but certainly on a weekly basis in programming, we certainly couldn't do uh, what we do without the support and, and really ultimately the guidance uh, that the officers provide to us. You know, I also want to thank uh, the team that that sits in inside these uh, these four walls here uh, at section headquarters. I, I think uh, all of us understand uh, nobody does anything alone, and we're fortunate to have uh, the very best team in the country. And uh, we we've had some transition, much like some of you have had some transition with some of your staffs, which is you know, kind of a, a natural evolution of, of a staff and, and the transitions and, and those that have moved on to new opportunities in a lot of ways spreads the wings a little bit of the South Florida PGA and the, uh, the influence that we continue to have in the industry to move uh, staff members on to uh, new and exciting positions that uh, will progress our career. And it also gives us the opportunity to, uh, to recruit new talent into the organization and, and something that that we've uh, we've been able to do. We're we're incredibly um, respectful of our past, and we're incredibly uh, excited of the, of the future that we have. And and I can tell you that there's no question our programs uh, are performing at an all-time high because of this group. And if you've had the opportunity uh, to spend any time around them, uh, then you would know that's the case. And and certainly, as many of you know, because you see her all the time, the cornerstone of our team, uh, Meredith Shul will be celebrating her 17th year. Uh, with the section here in August. And so uh, it, it's a great deal of fun for me to come to work uh, alongside this group to share their passion for uh, serving the members and, and ultimately for growing the game. You know, and, and lastly, uh, what I'll say is, is I'm, I'm humbled and honored uh, and, and respect the opportunity that I have here to serve uh, as the executive director of uh, the second largest section in the country. I appreciate the, the confidence that you all have in me to have this position. And at any point, if there's anything I can do or anyone on your team on our team can do, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Jeff. And we have the best executive director in the country. Believe me, I've been going to meetings for years and I can tell you that for sure. And the way he speaks about Meredith and the rest of the staff is right on. We have the best and we have the best players too. And that's well, I'm so proud of what Jeff spoke about. I was able to go out to Valhalla and it was one of the most incredible things I ever experienced to watch Jeremy and Evan and Tyler and um, follow them for, for so long, for so many days. And it was so exciting. And uh, just being an officer, I was so proud when I was out there. So congratulations to all of you again. Great players. I just show up to play every week, you know, and have fun. Um, I'd also, at this time, like to... Get, join, please join me in a brief hearing to update all our section committees. These reports are all pre-recorded. Hey, South Florida PGA. This is Matt Cahill, your tournament chair. It's been an exciting past few months here at the section. In April, we sent 16 professionals to Frisco, Texas for the Professional National Championship. We had three of them qualify for the team of 21 and earn a spot in the PGA Championship. Congratulations to Evan Bowser, Tyler Collett, and Jeremy Wells. If you're able to follow, Jeremy was able to make the cut and play the weekend at Valhalla. Congratulations on some great play and way to represent the section. Just last month, we completed the Fort Lauderdale Open. Michael Cartrude was victorious in a playoff over Justin Hicks. We have a wonderful schedule of events this year at some great venues. 
culminating in September at Imperial Golf Club for our section championship. This event has grown in popularity and we've had record field sizes over the past few seasons. So I encourage you to sign up early and get your name on the list. And we hope to see you all out there in mid-September for our flagship event. Hope you all have a wonderful summer and I look forward to seeing you out on the golf course in some of our tournaments. Hi, my name is Scott Newell, instructor of golf at the Forest Country Club and the South Florida PGA Senior Tournament Chair. We are just getting started with our 2024 tournament season. First off, we want to congratulate David Ladd and Alan Morin for qualifying and representing the South Florida PGA section in the KitchenAid Senior PGA Championship, which was held May 23rd through the 26th in Benton Harbor, Michigan. We've hosted a few events already this year. We wanted to recognize Tim Cantwell for his victory at our Senior Open at Jonathan's Landing in Jupiter. And congratulations also goes out to Jerry Tucker for his convincing victory in the senior division of the Fort Lauderdale Open, which wrapped up on May 21st. We have a lot of great upcoming events on the senior calendar this year, including the Easy Go South Florida Open in Fort Myers, the Yamaha Junior Senior in Atlantis, the Senior Pro Pro in North Palm Beach, the South Florida PGA Senior PGA Professional Championship being held at the Loxahatchee Club in Jupiter, the Bushnell Stroke Play Championship being held in Vero Beach as well. As we discussed in the section spring board meeting, we are seeing more and more participation with our events. Events are filling up fast and it's important for all of our professionals to register as early as possible. Thank you all for being part of our great section and enjoy the summer, everyone. Hello, fellow South Florida professionals. Lee Strover here to provide a junior golf update. Thank you to our section junior golf team whose efforts continue to pay off with record numbers of junior tour members and participants. Some of their success includes junior tour membership is at an all time high with over 1,050 members this year to date. This is up over 100 members compared to the same period last year. 26 events have been held so far in 2024 with 23 of them selling out and an average wait list size of 33 players. With this continued growth in members and event participation demand, we have experienced two notable challenges. We're having as hard a time as ever in finding host facilities, especially November through May. If you are able to help host an event, please reach out to the section team. This increased demand has also led to longer wait lists than ever with events selling out in record time. The medalist tour is selling out an average of 10 minutes per event compared to five and a half hours last year. The prep tour is selling out an average of five and a half hours compared to seven and a half hours last year. Some other important notes. The South Florida PGA Junior Tour is celebrating its 25th anniversary. A special anniversary logo has been created to recognize this achievement. This year, the Section Junior Golf Team started a monthly college recruitment email. These emails are experiencing a 90% open rate. Last but not least, the Junior Tour is very excited about the new partnership with Callaway and Top Tracer. This is a great opportunity for the Junior Tour and more details will be released when available. Thank you for your time and wishing you the very best this summer. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marty Hall and I am the professional development and mentoring chair for our South Florida PGA section. I want to thank my fellow members and associates for giving me this opportunity to provide some updates on our exciting education programs as well as our mentoring program. I will start off with education and giving a special shout out and thanks to Chris Evans and Sean Kicker, who are both on the education committee and also chairs for their chapters. They have put together fantastic in-person programs on both coasts for all of you to enjoy this summer. Uh, you will find on the South Florida PGA website that they have four to five offerings for you to get together with your fellow professionals and learn about everything from turf grass management and golf genius to golf instruction. So I hope that you all will avail yourselves of those wonderful opportunities to earn some PDR in person with your peers. Um, I'd also like to thank Chris Evans uh, for his help and assistance um, in working with me to bring CMAA education to our section. Uh, we are fortunate that the Florida chapter of the CMAA has opened up their educational opportunities to all golf professionals in our section. Uh, they have some of their premier events, which are open to you for $60 a session, and those are in person. And again, those are listed on our South Florida PGA website, and they also have many virtual offerings. 
So I encourage all of you uh, to sharpen up those executive management and leadership skills by taking advantage of the CMA offerings that we are bringing to you this year. Um, so as far as education, we're going to have about 20 different events that you can avail yourselves of this year, both in person and virtual. Uh, with the points cycle coming up uh, due next summer, uh, this is the time to take advantage of this and make sure that you get those PDR credits that you need. Uh, shifting gears to our mentor program, uh, we currently have over 300 associates here in South Florida, and we want to do everything possible to ensure that they are able to successfully obtain their PGA membership. Uh, so we have a tremendous mentoring program going where we have identified PGA professionals that have recently completed the PGA education program, and they have graciously volunteered their time to help those associates currently enrolled in the program. Uh, we feel this brings great value because they've recently gone through the curriculum and the testing and the trips to Frisco, and so they can really relate to the associates and help answer the questions that they may have. Uh, this is to also augment already what we have is a monthly phone call where our associates um, have an opportunity to hop on a call with section staff, uh, with PGA education staff, as well as myself. And we answer questions about the book work and the other um, things that are required for membership uh, to make sure that they are getting all of the help that they need. And the next monthly call for the associates will be on June 5th. And again, there is a dedicated area on the South Florida PGA website, which does provide information about the mentor program. So if you have any associates working for you, please encourage them to take advantage of these resources. Uh, we are to, here to help and we want them to be successful. So in conclusion, I just want to thank everyone uh, for their support and assistance with both PJ education and mentoring. Uh, there are so many people that are supporting both programs for our section, which are so important um, for our, our continued development and success. So thank you all. Take care. Hello, South Florida section, Jason Bale from Jupiter Hills. I am the chairman and board member in charge of uh, teaching and coaching. And uh, I want to run through a little quick report from our recent uh, board meeting. I um, want to thank uh, Meredith Schuler as always for uh, keeping me straight and my committee, Kelly Stenzel, Grayson Zacker, Jeremy Wells, and Renee O'Higgins. Congratulations to Jeremy uh, on uh, making the cut at the PGA Championship. What a wonderful, wonderful week that was for him and our section. Uh, we'll start with um, our teaching and coaching symposium. We're going to do that at September 9th and 10th at Quail Ridge. Uh, we've got a great lineup. We've got Chris Como headlining. Uh, we've invited uh, 2023 uh, National Teacher of the Year, uh, Kevin Weeks, to come in and be an MC. We've got a great lineup of um, rising stars with uh, Grayson Zacker, uh, John McClain, Alex Ugachi, and Derek Swoboda. They'll be joining us in our uh, Rising Stars uh, part of our program. Um, we have also decided that uh, we want to really celebrate the uh, Section Teacher of the Year each year. So our reception at the end of the first day um, will be in honor of our, uh, our current uh, Teacher of the Year for the section, which is Renee O'Higgins. And we'll follow that each year. So every year that we uh, have our Teaching and Coaching Symposium, um, we'll honor that Teacher of the Year um, with that reception. Um, we are working really hard from a standpoint of a committee and creating a good farm system, um, really sharing some ideas with national. I serve on the National Teaching and Coaching Committee um, as well, and uh, it's been fun to, to kind of try things out in our section and then move them up to some ideas with national. Um, so we're working really hard at that, um, as well as uh, getting into the chapter levels. We discussed a lot at the board meeting of how we could take our uh, format, um, how we could take our ideas and uh, and use those um, within the chapter and as well as the chapter feeding ideas up to us at the section level and then moving that up to a national level. So that's our report for our teaching and coaching committee. Uh, hope everyone has a wonderful summer. Please reach out to me with any questions at any time. Uh, J Bale, B-A-I-L-E, at jupiterhillsclub.org. All the best.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, what a rock star group of professionals we have running our committees. At this time, I would like to introduce our District 13 Director, Russ Libby, who has pre-recorded his report, which we will play now for you. Good morning, I'm Russ Libby. I'm your District 13 Director for Georgia, North Florida, and South Florida. Thanks for having me today. It's quite an honor for me to represent the 4,600 PGA professionals from District 13, the largest in the country, but also an honor to represent the 2018 PGA members and associates of the South Florida PGA. Uh, I'm going to start on a high note. I uh, returned two and a half weeks ago from Louisville, Kentucky. It was quite an exhilarating trip out there for me and my family and my fellow board members. I don't believe the PGA Championship could have come off much better. Uh, what a great champion we have in Xander Shoffley. It went down to the last putt, a thrilling leaderboard, and really, by all accounts, uh, a great championship for all. I know we can all be proud of that. Uh, I'm really proud of the fact that three PGA professionals from South Florida uh, traveled up there with a team of 20, the Corbridge team of 20, and competed so very well. Jeremy Wells made the cut. Tyler Collett also played very, very well, uh, as did Evan Bowser. So congratulations to those three individuals and to the South Florida PGA. Uh, also, the senior PGA, we had David Ladd and Alan Morin compete very well up there at Benton Harbor at a very challenging co golf course. So congrats to them. Uh, South Florida has been well represented in our majors. Uh, also, we have the PGA uh, KPMG Women's PGA Championship coming up at the end of this month. So we're looking forward to sending off wishes for Sandy Chankacha, Jennifer Boros, and Stephanie Connolly Eisworth, who are traveling out to Seattle, Washington at Sahali to compete in the Women's PGA. When I spoke to you last June of 23, uh, there were some disturbances in the golf ecosystem. At that time, the PGA Tour had announced a framework agreement with LIV in the PIF. And although not much has transpired since then, we do believe that, that there is a threat. There is a threat to the game that we love, uh, a threat to the golf ecosystem and the industry, but also potentially to the PGA of America. And I just wanted to share with you that the PGA Board reviews and monitors this situation daily, weekly, monthly, and we're on it. And as soon as uh, this situation moves in any direction, uh, you will be hearing some updates from all of us. So thank you for that and thank you for your concern. Uh, equally as important, the USGA's ruling on the rollback of the golf ball. Last fall, they announced this rollback. Uh, we stated during the comment period and as recently as the PGA Championship, you may have seen our CEO, Seth Waugh, and our president, John Lindert, state unequivocally that any changes in equipment that make the game more difficult, that make it less fun, is not something that we support. I will say that despite all these threats and these challenges and maybe even some economic headwinds, uh, I'm pleased to report that the game of golf is as strong as ever. Uh, last year, the National Golf Foundation reported that 531 million rounds were played. We now have 45 million golfers, this is on course and off course, loving the game that we all love as well. Golf now is at 102 economic impact to the U.S. economy. So surely golf is in a great place right now, but just as your South Florida board is committed to do, or your national board is committed to making sure that we build on this momentum and this energy and always showcase the PGA professional as the best individual that's equipped to grow this great game. I wanted to give you a few updates on deferred compensation. Uh, as of March 31, uh, the program did end and $2.3 million were distributed to retirement accounts for over 1,500 PGA professionals, those that met the 200 point threshold. Uh, only 36 PGA professionals in South Florida did meet that threshold. So we have some room for growth there. Uh, but the good news is the new program started in for 2025, 24-25. Uh, and here's an opportunity for you to take advantage of tax deferred funds and to grow your retirement. April, May is a pretty busy time for the PGA of America. Uh, April, of course, we have our PPC championship. This year we hosted it at the home of the PGA in Frisco, Texas, and it was quite a thrilling week. Uh, we also had the PGA Works Collegiate Championship in our district at TPC Sawgrass. 
Derek Sprague, Matt Burroughs threw out the red carpet for all the competitors. Uh, this year, Florida A&M won the men's division, while Texas A&M Corpus Christi, the woman, they won uh, their division for the fourth consecutive year. I'm uh, blessed to be on the National Legis Legislative and Advocacy Committee. Uh, I traveled to Washington, D.C., uh, straight out from the PGA uh, Works Championship uh, and met with 400 industry leaders. And there we, we enacted uh, legislation, presented legislation to congressional leaders that will positively impact the game, our PGA professionals, and the industry. It was pretty thrilling to be there on Capitol Hill and meet with congressional leaders, and I think we made some good marks there. Uh, one that's really important is the Department of Labor ruling on exempt employee compensation and overtime. Uh, this is slated to go into effect in July of this year. At that time, uh, the minimum salary is going to be elevated to $43,888, $43,888. Uh, in January of 25, it's going to go to 56000 I'm sorry, 58656 So really something for our PGA facilities to take a close look at our PGA members to make sure that we all fall within confines of what the DOL is putting forth. I will say our lobbyist on Capitol Hill, which is Crossroads Strategies, has indicated that they believe there will be a stay challenging this ruling. And of course, uh, the election in November may dictate which, which direction this moves in. But even still, it's good to keep a close eye on this Department of Labor ruling. I also reported to you last year on the PGA logo update and brand campaign. Uh, Jackie's going to put up a couple of videos from the brand campaign that uh, started in the Ryder Cup of, of September of 23. I think you'll enjoy these. Please take a look. Good morning, class. Good morning, Miss Sarah. Friday, we talked about what we want to be when we grow up. Did everyone get a chance to work on the assignment? Do we have any volunteers that would like to read what they wrote? Awesome, Tony. Why don't you come up to the front and share? I don't know what I want to be when I grow up, but I know what I want to do. I want to do something that takes me outside. I want to be a leader. Email about Amberland. Good job, way to go. I want to make a difference. I want to try to do your best. Okay. You can do it. How are you? I'm Tony. I want to inspire someone. Most of all, great. Oh, good job. I want to find my place in the world. When I grew up, I became a PGA of America golf professional, and it all came true. PGA of America golf professionals. We love this game. What is it about this game we love so much is that it can never be perfected. It's the community you build. But I can practice anywhere. It's because it's a game for everyone. Whatever the reason, it all begins with a PGA of America golf professional like me. PGA of America. We love this game. I hope you enjoyed them. Uh, additionally, I'm also putting up the new logo renditions that were approved by the board in January of this year. And you have the new PGA of America logo, as well as the new PGA member logo and the Master Professional logo as well. That's about all I have to report today. Uh, I want to thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for your patience and listening to all this information. I hope you enjoy the rest of the meeting. And as always, if I can do anything for you, please don't hesitate to ask. Have a great rest of your meeting. Thank you, Russ. We all get to spend a lot of time with Russ. He comes to our board meetings and does a lot for our section. Like he said, our District 13, which com is comprised of Georgia, North Florida, and South Florida, is the largest in the country. At this time, we will now conference in our career consultant, Ted Logan, to speak on PGA of America Career Services. Hey, thank you, Paul. Uh, it's been Certainly an exciting and busy year for the Career Services Department. Uh, in terms of interactions, we've worked in the past year with 30% of all members. So that could be anything from career planning, job search, compensation reports, resume reviews, interview preparation, 
uh, job postings, just to name a few. Uh, but we're certainly here to help. Uh, I myself am dedicated to South Florida, uh, but we have a team of 24 other career consultants across the country as well, all as part of our network to serve our entire membership. Um, as we all know, golf is certainly in a, a bull market. So at any one time, we could have 50 jobs open uh, across our section. Um, and that bull market includes salary and compensation. Uh, so in, in the past year, about 50% of the membership in South Florida has filled out our compensation survey. Uh, and I'll certainly continue to encourage everybody uh, to update that as you go throughout your year with yourselves, with your staffs. Uh, and that really helps us have the best data uh, for all of you to share with your management boards, et cetera. Uh, we continue to grow our executive search brand. 15% uh, of all searches happen right here in South Florida. So 15% of searches across the entire country. Uh, so this is certainly a, a market for it. We truly feel the PGA should lead the search business for PGA professionals. Uh, and we feel it with our team of 24 career consultants across the country and 41 executive directors, uh, we definitely have the broadest network to do so. So we'll, we'll continue to focus on that uh, as a business and a, a service for our professionals. And then lastly, I, I really just want to thank uh, the officers, the board, the staff. Uh, thank you for your support personally, but uh, certainly for your commitment to the members. Uh, for the past 10 years, I've worked with the PGA of America and all across the country uh, with all sections, and, and this one is truly special. So thank you. Thank you, Ted. Ted is another one I get to spend a lot of time with. And like he said, what, what's happened here in the South Florida section with Ted, Jeff, and the team is that they've been able to drive up those compensation numbers. And with that comp survey, the more information we get, the better that is for them to help do this in the future. So again, when you do see that, please make sure you fill that out. I would like to now introduce a pre-recorded report from our player engagement consultant, Lauren Court. Hi, my name is Lauren Court, and I am your player engagement consultant for the South Florida section. I also partner with the North Florida section and the Georgia section, and I encourage you to reach out to me with any and all questions you might have for player engagement programming, such as PJ Coach, PJ Family Golf, and our PJ Junior League. Today, I'm excited to share some updates regarding PJ Junior League and to also discuss the incredible opportunities that this program can offer to both you and your facility. Our 2024 PGA Junior League season is off to an amazing start with over 800 players participating in the South Florida section. Currently, we have 56 programs running with the goal to reach 70 programs by the end of the year. We would like to take a moment to recognize our 2023 Game Changer Award winners. The purpose of the Game Changer Awards is to celebrate programs that are creating more opportunities for more kids to play more golf. The Game Changer Award recognizes the 25 largest programs in the country, as well as the largest program in each PGA section. Alex Fernandez with Crandon Golf Academy was the Game Changer Award winner for not only the South Florida section, but for having the 10th largest program nationally with 285 players playing in their programs last year. Congratulations to Alex and all of his coaches that support their PGA Junior League programs. In addition to Alex, Jeff Jones and Sean Kicker were recognized in 2023 as a Player Engagement Game Changer Award winner. Jeff and Sean met all of the following criteria. 24 or more active PGA Junior League players, hosted multiple PGA Junior League age divisions or multiple seasons, hosted a PGA Family Golf event, and are ADM certified. Congratulations. If you're interested in learning more about how you can become a Game Changer Award winner in 2024, please let me know. When it comes to youth golf programs, we know that flexibility is key, and that's exactly what PGA Junior League brings to the table. Whether you're a seasoned coach or you're really just starting out, this program allows you to tailor your program to fit the needs of both you and your families. 
you have the opportunity to play against other facilities in a multi-facility league or keep everything in-house at your facility and make the program your own. Do you want to focus on fundamentals? Do you prefer a more relaxed, fun-oriented atmosphere? Are you looking for a little competition with our championship season? It's completely up to you. With PGA Junior League, you have the ultimate flexibility to run the program your way. Our Game Changer membership model enables you to run programs year round. This means you can keep those young golfers engaged in improving their skills throughout the entire year. And not only does this benefit the players, but it also opens up a world of possibilities for incremental revenue generation for both you and your golf course. Our current average coaching fee for the section is $222 per player. That's $200,000 in coaching revenue to our coaches so far for the 2024 season. Not to mention the incremental revenue from spectator carts, food and beverage, merchandise, upgraded memberships, and engaging in other coaching programs or activities at your facility. By keeping kids actively involved in the sport year round, you're laying the groundwork for lifelong golf enthusiasts. With its unparalleled flexibility year round potential and revenue generating capabilities, it's a win-win for everyone involved. If you'd like to get involved with any of our player engagement programs or simply want to learn more, please reach out to me. I'd love to set up a time to meet with you and speak about player engagement. I look forward to the rest of the 2024 season and seeing you all soon. Thank you. Lauren, thank you and keep up the great work. I would now ask for consideration of old business. Is there any old business? Okay, with no old business, I would now ask if there is any new business. Is there any new business? Okay, at this point, we will close the formal business meeting and move on to open forum. If there are any items for open forum, please enter those items into the chat and we will address them. I will pause for a few moments now to give you time to enter any questions. If anyone would like to speak their questions as well, go ahead. Ryan. Hey, Paul, uh, Brian Lee, certified PGA member. Uh, a little upset that there is no certified PGA logo any longer. It seems as if PGA of America has decided that all that hard work has gone for naught. What's the process to voice my concerns even further? Completely understood. Jeff is gonna come up and give you a little bit of update. We have spoken at the district and annual meetings on your behalf about that as well. So Jeff's coming up now to talk a little more. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Brian, and and good question. You're not the only certified member that, uh, that enjoyed those stars and you should enjoy, enjoy those stars because you earned them. The, the process would be to uh, to send Russ Libby an email and uh, or a phone call uh, to Russ. Russ's information is, is on our website. We'll also include that in the recap email uh, at the conclusion of the meeting. But but Russ is our is our voice to the national board. Uh, this actually this very same topic was talked about at our uh, May board meeting, and uh, at the time Paul and others in the boardroom voiced. Uh, that concern to Russ. So he he's aware of it, but hearing from more PGA members uh, would, would certainly be a, uh, something that you should do as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you, Brian. Great question, and again, we all feel that what you accomplished should be recognized, and we will continue to fight for that. Okay, for the new partner, you would contact Meredith. Sure about that, if you want to talk about that. Are there any more questions? For open forum.
DC, if you'd like to speak your question, please go ahead. Okay, no more questions. Uh, yes, I have a question. This is Marty Kavanaugh. <clears throat> Go ahead. Yes, um, I'm very sad to see the um, I'm a PGA member for 54 years, a PGA master professional, and uh, I'm very sad to see um, the uh, the list of our deceased members. Uh, as we all have great friends there. But I'd like to bring to, to your attention one member on that list that deserves your special prayers, and that is a John Henry, passed away in March. I'm sure many of you knew John Henry uh, from the national office. And when we look at our career services division, um, John Henry committed hours and years of his time to develop that program for us at the PGA. We, we happen to work together there. Some of you may know. And he was a very special member, very special person. He worked tirelessly for you in employment when it was in its infancy. Remember what, what, what is called career links and career services. I'd like for you to remember him, especially for all he did for us as the na at the national office. What a great member um, he was of the PGA of America. Um, then there's one other thing that I'd, I'd like to ask you, Paul. Um, I have been so proud in my life to, to wear the PGA of America logo. And it was the proudest day of my father's life where I had a chance to wear the PGA logo. It's a major part of my life. The PGA logo that has now been developed. I, I, I was just want to know what was the reason for changing that logo so drastically to a minimalist logo. But that PGA logo that we've had for all of these years was one of the four most recognizable logos in the world. And although many people didn't know what it meant, know what, what it stood for, they knew that it stood for golf. I just want to know if you or Joff or anybody was ever informed and given a good reason why we would make such a drastic change in the logo that we've had since, since 1916. Uh, that that's all that I have to say, and I, I thank you for your patience and your time. Absolutely, thank you, and and we always like to be reminded of those great professionals who have gone from us, and, and God bless. To talk about a little bit about the logo and bring Jeff up, but I think we're all upset the day it happened, and and I can remember um, at our district meeting um, last year, and and it came up, and it's come up a million times, and it's been changed over the years. I, it's Okay, if you go and look at the logo, if you go to um, Texas right now and you, you go in the office and you look at where the logos come from, it's changed dramatically over, over time. But this was probably the most drastic and the hardest to accept. And uh, I understand your, your feelings about it. And Jeff's going to talk a little bit more because this does get discussed nationally uh, quite a bit and at the district meetings, which Russ uh, gets all that info as well. So hold on, I'm just going to speak a little more. Uh, thanks, Marty, and, and thank you also for the recognition of John. I, I'm certain John is uh, proud of uh, and would be proud of, of where Career Services has come to today. You know, in, in regard to the logo, and, and this was a national board decision uh, with the logo, and and, and what, what really kind of prompted it, honestly, was uh, was one year ago today when, when the PGA Tour uh, made that decision to uh, set up a you know, a new venture with with PIF and this framework agreement to set up a new commercial entity uh, for all the commercial properties of the tour. Uh, that night and for days to follow, the logo that would get run on the news stories uh, was not the PGA Tour logo. In many cases, it was uh, the PGA of America logo. And, and the board met uh, really quite quickly after that. They weren't aware of that announcement that was going to come. And, and the board 
at that point kind of started the discussion of we have to figure out a way to separate ourselves uh, from the PGA Tour. And uh, they hired the the agency that created the spots that uh, that Russ uh, showed in in the uh, in his report, the, the videos about we love this game. And and part of that was uh, was a new logo. And, and that came from consumer research. And, you know, again, I, what I would say is that uh, this was a decision that was handled on a national level and uh, there are trickle down effects, uh, certainly for for our section and logo and the backdrop that you see behind me. We had to do a significant amount uh, of changing and a significant amount of expense to uh, to take care of the logo change here in our section. But what I would encourage you to do, Marty, is uh, just as we had encouraged uh, the previous question with Brian is uh, is to reach out to Russ. Ru Russ is our uh, spokesperson to the board, and, and Russ is the one that uh, can voice our opinions on the national level. Thank you very much, Jeff. And I don't want to belabor this point, Paul, if it's okay if I just could say one other thing. It's just bringing it, raising the point, why didn't we just simply give a cease and desist to the PGA Tour? We licensed the PGA Tour to use the initials PGA. We have since 1968 when we had the break. So I just don't understand and I'm not upset or anything. I'm having I have trouble with my voice. Um, I'm just I just don't understand why didn't we didn't give them a cease and desist. You, there's no need for you to respond any further. Um, you, you're very gracious. Uh, and this has been a wonderful meeting. I've really enjoyed it. And um, thank you very much. And uh, for all of you do all that you guys do. No, thank you. And your concern is about the section and, and the PGA logo. And it, it's a great question. And I think there was a ton of concern when it first came out. And like Jeff said, uh, it, it was a it was a quick reaction to making a change to try to take care of something they felt was important. Um, and they have heard quite a bit from PGA members all over the country about it. So I think you'll, you'll see more um, about it. And Russ will definitely follow up on that as well. Okay, Jeff's going to come up and address another question. Yeah, the uh, the the question in the in the queue is uh, regarding you know lobbying, PG of America lobbying in regards to the Department of Labor rule. The, the PG of America is actually not lobbying uh, in regard to the Department of Labor rule. They uh, they certainly are in the process of uh, disseminating information, and they work very closely on the national level with, with the Golf Course Owners Association. So uh, it's really Golf Course Owners Association that that's doing that lobbying and. It, I, I think that the, the question is not that the PGA of America is opposed to uh, to paying more. I, I, I think the question for all employers is the drastic change in the Department of Labor minimum standards. And uh, and, and we'll see how that plays out. I, I think there's a, a general feeling there's going to be a stay issue uh, with this particular situation. Uh, but we'll know more as we get to July 1st. The last time this uh, appeared several years ago, it, uh, there was a stay uh, issued against it. And, and it ultimately did not go uh, into effect. So um, I, I did do think I saw Russ uh, with his hand raised. I, Russ, I don't know if you want to touch on any more with the logo or the Department of Labor ruling. Yeah, Jeff, thanks. Uh, I appreciate the comments. And I understand that the, uh, first of all, the the logo change, it's it's highly emotional, right? It's, it's something that uh, we all hold near and dear. Uh, just like DC said, it, it's a, one of the biggest days in my life is when I got my PGA membership and, and hence I could I could carry that badge. So uh, I understand it. And I, and I think you and uh, you and Paul have done a great job explaining um, the initial change with the logo, I should say, uh, emanated from our team uh, in our desire to to make a, more, a better digital logo, uh, both on social media, digitally, the old logo quite honestly, it was a bit clunky. Uh, so that's when the first dialogue started. And then certainly on June 6, uh, when the the announcement was made uh, by the PGA Tour, uh, the, the nightly news, if you recall, the NBC nightly news had the PGA Tour logo. Uh, they tried to put the, T the Tour logo up, but they actually had the PGA of America logo as striking this deal with Saudi Arabia and Liv and Piff. And, you know, we've had this challenge for years, right? Uh, trying to differentiate ourselves from the tour. And it may go on as long as we're all alive. But th the one thing the board wanted to do was to make sure we could differentiate ourselves. Uh, hence, we added a really bold America. Uh, we changed the logo. It also worked digitally better. 
and that was really the the process um, and this did, did did go through committee i want everybody to know uh, it also went through focus groups it went through a fairly long process and um, i think uh, paul you said this too the logo has changed actually since 1916 on average every eight to ten years so there has been an evolution of the logo and um, i think all the questions are good and i what i would say this if you have any concerns uh you can you can fire off an email to me and i will carry it into the boardroom and to the appropriate people that need to hear your words uh, i had an email earlier today on the certified logo and also the specialized logo where did that go so i understand it uh, i get it and i promise you this that i will carry your concerns uh, up into that boardroom the question on uh, Department of Labor is, is certainly uh, in flux right now. I actually sat on a Department of Labor uh, webinar, which was put forth by the NGCOA. Uh, but but definitely, let's let's definitely. There's no point uh, arguing this. There's a reason why we have people like Ted Logan, uh, a, a national regional resource, is to help us place PGA professionals in higher paying jobs but to drive compensation. So we are all about driving compensation uh, as high as we can go for our PGA members and, and associates. Uh, I think that uh, some people would argue that this is a little bit heavy handed by the United States government and the Department of Labor uh, that has been thrust on some of the small businesses across the country. Uh, since COVID, we've certainly seen a, a fairly significant increase in salaries and wages for our PGA members, and that is a good thing. So. I do believe it's going to probably be challenged. Uh, and as I said earlier, it'll probably uh, depend on how the election goes in November as to see where this where this, uh, where this this moves. But I would say this right now, PGA professionals and PGA facilities just need to take a close look at their staff configuration and just make sure they protect themselves. And I think that's the main thing that we can look at right now and see how this flows out. Thank you so much. Russ, thank you. Russ, thank you and Jeff. Uh, great replies. And, and as they both noted, this isn't the first time the Department of Labor has tried this and it did fail the first time. And again, as Russ said, we do want to increase um, salaries and, and money for our PGA employees, but at the same time, we want this to take the right toll. Brian has a question. Brian, go ahead. Is there anything Sorry, else? Paul, no question. Okay. Any last questions? Okay, I would like to thank everyone for attending the virtual meeting and wish everyone the best of luck and success over the next few months. Also, I look forward to seeing all of you out on the links. Let's get out and play some golf and have some fun. It's that time of year. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you.